Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is February 25th. Today, we're going to continue our study in the book of Colossians in chapter 1. For the past week or so, uh, we've been going over verse by verse from chapter tw or verse 12 down to where we're at today, where we're going to pick it up in verse 20. We're almost, almost through, praise the Lord. This has been a, a, a great study through chapter one of the book of Colossians. If you missed any of this, you need to go back uh, six, seven days and watch these videos because there has been some great depth uh, in this study that the Lord has been revealing to us, and he's continuing to do so. Uh, I anticipate in the next couple of days finishing just this one chapter in the book of Colossians. Now, I don't know if we're going to continue on with it or not. Uh, you know, I, I really seek the Lord's wisdom on when to proceed, when to change subjects. Uh, right now, this is where we're grounded and settled, and this is where we're going to be at, okay? So let's pick up. Yesterday, we read about the fullness of God that dwells in us. Amen? the fullness of God that dwells in each and every believer. He didn't leave anything out. He didn't give one person this little bit, and another one this little bit. Now, you can't have any of his. No. He gave the fullness, complete fullness, that dwells in the heart of every believer as soon as you're born again. It's the wisdom and understanding and how to use it that takes time. But the fullness is there. You are having I mean, it. Consider it like a full scholarship ride at a university. Praise the Lord. You still got to go to class. You still got to study, but everything's paid for. Praise God. Shout amen, somebody, to that revelation. Amen. Verse 20 in Colossians chapter 1. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself. We covered about this uh, several days ago reconciling all things to him by him i say whether the things in earth or things in heaven things all things doesn't matter where they're at all things are reconciled to him what does that mean be reconciled it means be counted back into him now that includes well we're going to study this you who were sometimes alienated, you who were sometimes the enemy, you were the enemy of Christ. You were the enemy of the gospel. You were the enemy of God. But he reconciled you back into him. You're reconciled back into the body of Christ, back into the, the family of God. You, who are sometimes fighting it, you are running as hard and as fast as you could go to hell. Not wanting anything to do with church, not wanting anything to do with God. You were also reconciled back into him through his cross. whether things in the earth or things in heaven. You who are sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Doesn't matter what you did. It does not matter what you did. You could be sitting on death row as a mass murderer right now. And salvation belongs to you just as much as it does to the little seven-year-old girl who decides in Sunday school class to ask Jesus into her heart. You, the mass murderer sitting on death row, or maybe even getting away with murder, you have the same opportunity to be reconciled back into the family of God, or perhaps for the first time into the family of God. You, you who are sometimes the enemy of Christ, by your wicked works, yet he has now reconciled into the body of his flesh through death. He died for your sins. 
He died for my sins. He died for the sin, every sin, every sin ever committed in the earth, in the world. By he, Jesus died for every single wicked thought, every wicked imagination, every wicked act ever done, every sin. Every sin. There is no sin that is not covered by the blood. If it could be, if there could be one person that ever committed, now, Jesus died for Judas. Think about that. It is up to the individual to ask for forgiveness. But forgiveness is there. Forgiveness is right there knocking. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. It's right there. All you have to do is open the door. And Jesus said he will come in and sup and dine with you. And you have forgiveness. Oh, folks, I just cannot emphasize this enough. Not every person will be saved unfortunately. But those who make the decision to be saved are saved. Now, there'll be some that say, nobody can make the decision to receive Jesus as their Savior. It's already been determined by God beforehand who his elect are, and this is absolutely true. His elect Praise God. His elect is the entire world. But not every person in the entire world will make the decision to become part of the elect. Not every person in the entire world will make the decision that they want to be part of the redeemed. They want to do their own thing. They think their way is the best way. They think that I don't want to be limited by what the Bible says. I want to be my own person. Well, you be your own person for eternity in hell. Because Jesus died for you. All you have to, and we're going to study the rest of this next time. But all you have to do is accept it. Accept that he defeated the devil. Accept that he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Accept that he died on the cross for you. Accept the fact that God, the Father, raised him from the dead. Oh, man. I, oh, shout amen, somebody. Because when you start getting a revelation of that, you can't help but to be blessed. Oh, you can't help but be blessed in all that you do.